Happy Monday, my friends. It is September 13th. I'm Claudia Bellafato alongside my co-host, Joe Fan. This is Bet to Win. We are in the beautiful Blue Wire studios at the Win Las Vegas. Very exciting. I think week two is almost more exciting than week one because we have some bold predictions. You could call them bold predictions, but I guess week two is more fun because we can kind of just trash what we expected. We can overreact. We can roast our own week one picks. Um, so we're going to do that. That's, that's going to be this show. And then we're going to talk a little bit AL wild card race because we have an interesting series coming up with our home teams. Before we get to that, though. Yeah, we've had, we get a couple of big weekends we, we, that we got to recap a bit. We had some big weekends. Because I'm just like catching up with you now. We yeah. didn't really get a chance to hang out over the weekend, which was super sad. I know. Uh, I watched football by myself all day yesterday. Yeah. Uh, you were in Detroit. You were in Indianapolis. I want to hear about your weekend. It was your birthday weekend. Happy birthday. Thank you. Yes, yes. Uh, speaking of watching games alone, I was alone on my birthday for the uh, Bucks cowboys game. By myself, sitting at a bar, which honestly, I don't really mind. I, I don't like, either. I'm okay like, with that. I, yeah, yeah, I'm cool with Did it. you treat yourself? Did you I like did. get a like, good meal? I did. Treat, well, it's funny because steak and a glass of red this wine. Big restaurant there that I guess like Peyton Manning goes to all the time, and I made it's a St. Elmo's for one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, St. Elmo's is delicious. Where yeah. I go every year during the combine. So I made a reservation for one. I was like, I'm gonna treat myself. This is gonna be amazing. Have yeah. some wine. And then I was like, I don't know what I'm thinking. The game's gonna be on. Like, yeah. So I just went straight to Yard House, had some beer. Oh, so you bailed on St. Elmo's? I did. Yeah, yeah. St. Elmo's delicious. delicious. You go in there during the combine, and no matter what night you go in, you'll just walk in. And you'll be like, oh, there's that head coach. Oh, there's that GM. Yeah. Oh, there's that, you know, yeah. Hall of Famer, whatever. Well, and it's the place. Saying. Everyone who goes there will make at yeah. least one stop at St. Elmo's. Hopefully I go back. Um, but it was cool. I had never been to that city before. I had never been to Detroit, which I also went to. I saw a U of M game on Saturday. The um, big house. That's the sick. Big, the big house was crazy. I have to say, like, no shade to <laughs> the Lions, but the Michigan game was definitely I felt a lot more in there. That's not shocking. Yeah, it's that's not, what you did. Right? I think that's yeah. that, that's college Michigan sports. fans their first time back in the big house. I think just college sports in general. It's I a mecca. About this a lot with the people I was at the game with. Yeah. Um, there's just so much more emotion that goes into college games. It yeah. was crazy. They did a ha whole halftime show with, for 9/11, and yeah. yeah, it was awesome. But the, um, then you were at a Lions game yesterday. Then I was at a Lions game yesterday, which was a ton of fun. Oh my gosh, if you. You have to check out. We have a new win bet bar we just opened up. It is so sick. It's so fun. I'm going to post a video later on Twitter. Um, but it was funny because those fans are awesome. And people were decked out in their outfits. And, of course, like no one really expected them to win the game. But when it came so close down the wire, I, and every, I mean, we're in a betting bar, so everyone has money on the game. People aren't even watching the game. That's how awesome the bar is. People are literally hanging out at the bar, like, watching the game from the TVs, even though we're Depending on what line you got that game at and when you got in oh. on the Niners, yeah. the end of that game was fascinating. Because if you we had eight and a half, backdoor. Yeah, you no. lost. I, I had a guy come up to me. He's like, if the Lions win this, I'm giving you $1,000. I was like, this is like a real quick. Uh, yeah, no, but it was fun. Super busy week. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Cbellafato TV. So I'm going to post some more fun stuff. Yeah, wait. No, 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 no. Before we get to my well, weekend, because okay, right. I want to talk about my weekend, my quick trip to Miami. Okay. But you had a tweet that I found hysterical. <laughs> I'm in Miami. I'm like, I think I'm having dinner at the hotel and it's your birthday. We're watching. It's the first game. So you're yeah. you're eating dinner by yourself. I'm eating dinner by myself. And, and you send out this tweet saying, <laughs> if I have to listen to someone else mansplain me, here you go with the yeah. perfect uh, <laughs> gift. <laughs> oh, I love it. Yeah. Of Jim Carrey. Man. If one more man <laughs> tries to sit down and mansplain an aspect of football, fantasy, or betting to me, that's the reaction. Can you give us just like the quick I mean, spark notes it, of like what they was, were trying to explain to you? It was like the Bucks cowboys game and down the wire when Brady was just throwing it out to basically run down the clock and get good field position. The guy's like, do you understand like, why they're doing this? This guy, I haven't even spoken a word to this dude. And I'm like sitting there <laughs> watching the game like... Because I had my, I mean, I, it did, they didn't cover, so I had my money on the Bucks. But either way, it was just a fun game to watch. And this guy's like, so do you understand what's happening? I'm like, bro. That's not even like in the, it's like, like not even in the weeds, like football conversation. No. It's like, yeah, yeah they're, they're losing and they're trying right. to win before the clock hits zero. And there was, you moron. There was plenty of guys because I was like checking my fantasy lineups and, and, you know, like looking at how the odds were changing and stuff so I could <laughs> prep for the show. And this guy's like, you play fantasy? I was like, all right. I literally, I'm not even joking. He actually, sorry if you're listening to this, because I did tell him about I hope our he is show. Listening. <laughs> I did tell him about our show. So I hope he is thank listening. You for, thank you for watching, listening. Roger. 
but bought Steve, me a, bought whatever me a your beer, name is. Bought me a beer, and honestly, I was just so over it. And I'm like, I got up. And left. I was like, I'll pay for this. Yeah, that's tough. Yeah, it was. It was. You'd think in the year 2021 we could get past you like that level of mansplaining. Yeah. Like my goodness, like the <laughs> shock and awe of a woman. A woman, no sports. Play, playing yeah. fantasy football. Brutal. Thought you were only allowed to do the Bachelor fantasy. Yeah. Right. Oh my God, I've never even seen that show. Um, but you. You went to Miami. I went to Miami. Uh, Chad Ochocinco, the, the newest on, on, on. brand ambassador for WinBet. Claudia Bellafato, Joe Fan, Chad Ochocinco, just all the same people. Shaq. Shaq. <laughs> ben Affleck. the same, on yeah. the same level. No. So just a couple of brand ambassadors kicking it in Miami. <laughs> uh, he was awesome. I, I, he's just kind of, he's kind of exactly what you would anticipate. I mean, he's... Uh, look at this. Like, I mean... So my guy, I all, all, <laughs> Yeah. Look at this photo. I'm so memeing this. So... So I all our partnerships guy who flew down from New York. I met him. We were the only two win bet people there. We had a, uh, a production company that was a contract for hire than um, Ocho's people. And mm. he posts on our Slack channel like, hey, I got, you know, some pics of Joe doing an interview with Ocho. And I'm like, dude, this is the worst <laughs> picture of all time. Why are you putting me on blast in front of the whole team? I'm the new guy. You're like the second person I've met from this company. I don't know anybody. And you're like, I love I all for that. Ocho's just like on his phone. I'm like. I have no idea figuring out what I'm like gonna do for dinner. He's like questioning his life. Like my whole life right there. Yeah. <laughs> you really can't it's get bad. Like it's just the most unflattering oh picture. The fit is pretty fire, if I do say so I mean, myself. Yeah. Uh, I'm awesome. a big joggers guy, and then brand new Nordstrom rat kicks I mean, that I feel really good the about. Joggers, you got the white sneaks. Yeah. So it's, just the face. it's a bad photo, but it was fun. So at one point, I'm trying to get like behind the scenes social content, and they're in between wardrobe changes and. Um, and I'm like, Hey, like, do you mind like, you know, like doing like a, your signature kind of salsa, whatever. And you know, I can, for a you know, video for WinBet social and he goes, no. And he smiles at me and I was like, is he messing with me right now? <laughs> I don't really know what to do. So I'm just going to stand there and wait him out. And he goes, and he made that face. <laughs> he goes, you got to catch that, you know, as it happens. And I was like, okay, fair enough. <laughs> and he comes back, uh, comes up. And I had to introduce myself, yeah, because the interview was like the end of it. That was yeah. the last thing we did for the shoot, after all the promo stuff. Comes up to me and gives me a big hug, and go kisses me on the cheek and goes, "I love you." <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes and changes the next outfit and continues on his promo shoot. And then we got done. And I was like, Wait. I was like, "Oh, Joe, thanks for the time, man. I appreciate the interview. This is now and an hour. And this is, this is an and hour then did afterwards." Did you kiss him? Yeah. No, I kissed his head. I kissed his bald head. Uh, and he go, he, he, I go like this, and he goes, he goes. I love you. And I was like, I love you, man. That's in the interview. So whenever that goes out, I mean, uh, our like, win bet team's ed editing it at some point. Touching. But yeah. Wow. Just a bromance between me and Oja, just Not a couple of win I bet ambassadors. from seeing this. Yeah. No, I, I wasn't expecting it either, but you know what? It was a whole lot of fun. So a couple of us uh, successful successful trips. Yours much wow. busier okay. than mine. But I didn't I didn't get any yeah, kisses. I don't know well. you, <laughs> yeah, no. What? No. Yeah. Yeah. Ocho, awesome. my guy, my new best friend. So yeah. Okay. Let's talk football, maybe? I don't know how you pivot you from sure? that won't... Ocho story to week one, but heck, lots to talk about in week one, so we should probably dive in as opposed to talking about our weekend. You don't want to talk about your new friend more? I'd like to hear I would love now. to talk about my okay. friend Ocho. All right. We are besties. Uh, week one was very exciting, and we talked a lot about it pre-week one last week, um, so we'll kind of break down some of our expectations versus what was a little more surprising, and I think... One thing that we expected was the NFC West to come out strong, and they did. All teams started the season 1-0. Uh, who on in that division kind of surprised you the most? I don't think that. I think that, to me, went exactly according to plan. I mean, 4-0, they outscore opponents collectively 141-76, to all four teams in the top 10 in the league, both offensively and defensively in terms of EPA. You look at all four games. My Russ for MVP take got off to a tremendous start. 254 yards on and four touchdowns on just 14 or 18 of 23 passing hyper efficient from him. The Cardinals absolutely embarrassed the Titans. Oh yeah. The, the, the Russ hype train has absolutely left the station. Uh, <laughs> the Cardinals embarrassed the Titans. Kyler Murray was a video game yesterday. I mean, yep. you look at some of the highlights where it, it was very Russell Wilson esque scrambling around extending plays uh, and finding guys downfield 289, 289 yards and four touchdowns for him. I mean, if we're took, looking for disappointments, the Titans were terrible, but this Cardinals team was arguably the most impressive of any of the four in the NFC West. The Stafford hype looks legit. He was tremendous. 20 of 26, 321 yards and three touchdowns. 
And the Niners, I know they, they let the Lions in, you know, late, but they put up mm. 40 on them on the road. Uh, and Jimmy Garoppolo looked tremendous. Kyle Shanahan mixing in Trey Lance, who had a rushing touchdown. These four teams are juggernauts. It's hard when you go into a division and all four teams genuinely believe that they're contenders. And I think yeah. all four of them are. I went into this season saying, if you tell me any, any which way how you have these four teams ranked power rankings wise before the season, I wouldn't argue with you because I think there's a case to be made for each one. And we saw why immediately in week one. The biggest issue for these teams in the division is that if they beat up on each other in the division, it's going to be harder for them to get that number one seed. And we know how important that first round buy is in terms of your odds of making the Super Bowl. But as advertised, the NFC West is loaded every year and maybe more so than ever uh, in 2021. If you had to pick a leader right now, who would you take? I know it's yeah, way no, too I mean, soon. I know. But... I mean, probably the Rams, because I think the Rams I would have put atop the division before the season. And, yeah. and Matthew Stafford looked every bit as good as we thought he would be mm -hmm. in, in Sean McVay's offense. They dismantled the Bears. I mean, 20 of 26, 321 and three touchdowns. I mean, he made it look easy. Daryl Henderson got going late. I mean, yeah. and Jalen Ramsey's still a stud. Aaron Donald's still a stud. I mean, they are loaded. Mm -hmm. Um you know, I think, and my other thing that I would say went according to plan, the, the Browns maybe played the Chiefs closer than what they expected, what we expected. They covered the six point spread. Um, but Patrick Mahomes, still the best player in football, doing best player in football type things. I mean, yeah. they're down two scores in the fourth quarter, and they have a one play, 75 yard touchdown drive with Patrick Mahomes rolling to his right, nearly out of bounds, basically an effort throw, just chuck it in the air, throws Tyreek Hill <laughs> open. And boom, now they're down on a score and they end up winning that game mm -hmm. and beating the Browns. And you show like the, the big difference of Baker Mayfield, I think a really good quarterback. Yeah. Patrick Mahomes, best player in the league. And when it comes down to those clutch moments in the fourth quarter, one of those guys comes through. And so the Chiefs still very impressive, but Patrick Mahomes really with two guys to throw to. It's all Travis Kelsey and Tyreek Hill. Mm -hmm. and you just can't stop it. It's, it's just remarkable. Yeah. And we talked so much about quarterbacks across the league before week one, but, you know, in preseason, preseason because there were so many questions surrounding the quarterbacks. Uh, you mentioned Mahomes, no question really about Brady either. Even though the Bucks and Cowboys came, to, Bucks and Cowboys game definitely was a lot closer than we thought it would be. Um, Tom Brady still looks like the Tom Brady of old. So obnoxious. It, it is, especially for me, too, because yeah. like, I miss him so much. But the fact that the Bucks didn't cover the first time I put my money on them, like I told you, <laughs> I didn't bet them in the Super Bowl last year. And after that, I was like, all right, I'm never doing that again. I'm never doubting Tom. I don't know what I was thinking. And then, well, of course, it comes down to like less than two minutes left. Yeah. Bucks need a field goal. Right. Ho oh, hum. Tom Brady does it. Yep. 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 Vintage, as they uh, say. So Tom TV is... Tom Brady and Pat Mahomes maybe not as surprising that they started off strong. What was surprising, though? Woof. Woof. So this was supposed to be um, like the big sign-off, the big ta-da for Aaron Rodgers leaving Green Bay. I really don't think he wants to be there. Uh, historically bad game for Aaron Rodgers. And even after, it didn't even really seem like he cared. If you watch the press conference after, they asked him about his performance, and he was just like, yeah, it happens. Didn't play well. Like, no, that was an embarrassing loss for them. 38 to 3. Like, the Saints are good, but 38 to 3? The Packers were four point favorites going into that? What were your thoughts watching this? It's hard to comprehend how bad Aaron Rodgers was. He was late. He was inaccurate. He made poor decisions. I mean, mm -hmm. the intercept, the two interceptions he had were all on him. And, you know, granted, I still don't think. The, the, his you know arsenal of weapons around him is very good. I mean, the fact right. that he's pounding the table for Randall Cobb like it would fix all of the Packers' woes is, is a bit bizarre to me. But, um, I mean, he's got a hand up, own that one. It was bad. It's a good reminder that the Saints are a very good football team. And, and gosh, Jameis Winston, yeah. first quarterback in NFL history to have five touchdowns and less than 150 passing yards. 14 passes on 20 attempts, yeah. Yeah. So the Saints are a really good football team, which is why I was leaning Saints going into this one. And I mentioned that on our show last week. But there's no excuse to be a reigning MVP and lay an egg the way in which he did after an offseason of so many rumors and so mm -hmm. much turmoil. And, and you're kicking it in Hawaii and not at the, you know, the, your team's offseason program. And, and, and the rumors that he wants out, and this is going to be his last year, and he, he wants his new deal, wants different money. And so he, that, the, the, the Packers acquiesce. They give him his request. And he goes out and, and puts up a dud of a performance like that. Again, embarrassing is the word I would use. And, and you could probably pick any adjective 
you want and you would be right yep. um, or justified in saying so. A really ugly game from Green Bay. Only one week. Again, you know, Raider Rodgers probably pulling out the, remember the couple of years ago, the relax, R-E-L-A-X <laughs> that he put out uh, on social media and in his press conferences. But I think this was so bad, so egregiously terrible that there's some legitimate cause for concern just because we know the turmoil that was taking place in the organization going into this game. And, yeah. and you can't imagine that's subsiding at all. And probably there's pl plenty of people in the front office, maybe GM Brian Gutekinds is saying, huh, maybe time to look in the mirror, Mr. A.A. Ron, as opposed to pointing fingers at the organization. Right. And I, I mean, you make a good point, though. It's not like he does have a ton of support around him. And we kind of saw this. Again, it is game one, but the line didn't really do much to help. They allowed six quarterback hits, two sacks. The secondary allowed an average of over 10 yards per completion. So, like, he wasn't doing much, but the rest of his team wasn't either, which, I mean, the score speaks for it, 38-3. to three. Um, But definitely the worst start for his for his career, and I don't think we'll ever see something like this again, so that's kind of promising for the future, I guess you could say. But is there a chance? Like, th that's crazy. There's no chance in hell that he would take the bench like going forward right is no be they're, not benching. they're not no, benching the okay. reigning MVP but it was there, <laughs> I would uh, love to have you come out with like a hot take on no that. my no? Well, no? the hot take is the conspiracy theory that my buddy Benjamin Solak of the ringer threw out there yeah. like maybe Aaron Rodgers is like this Trojan horse that he returned to the Packers just to sabotage the season and like <laughs> that's a more justifiable explanation of what happened yesterday <laughs> Obviously, this tweet went viral, and Benjamin mm -hmm. Solak's one of the most creative minds on social media. He's one of my, yeah, I love that guy. But um, I saw that, and I said, you know what? Maybe. And he said, that's a conspiracy theory I am happy to peddle. And I think uh, a lot of, of social media has run with it because it's like, that's the, it's got to be the only explanation that could be that bad. He was the worst quarterback in football yesterday. Yeah. Objectively speaking, like, there's no argument. It, so I like throwing out the conspiracy theory there. It's the good. Trojan horse. Yeah. I love it. Uh, let's talk a little more about quarterback performances um, and more so clutch and not so clutch. We'll start with Joe Burrow because he's coming back from that ACL, MCL injury that cut his last year short. We weren't exactly sure what to expect of him this year. Uh, they beat the Vikings 27-24, game-winning drive in overtime led by him. He got sacked five times in the game, so he wasn't really having an easy time, but he still had a great performance. What's your take on, on what you saw from him? It was a wonderful day for a number of sophomore quarterbacks. Joe Burrow was fantastic. Didn't, didn't throw a turn or didn't throw a pick yesterday. And what's come out that in that, that overtime drive, it was fourth and one. Apparently, a running play was called. He didn't like the look. And he changed it and, and took a shot downfield and delivered a 32-yard strike to tight end C.J. Uzuma and, and ends, ends up leading to that game-winning field goal. Mm. I mean – that's the stones to do that. I mean, the confidence to do that in your first game back after an ACL tear is tremendous. Jamar Chase, all of the, the reports, he, he prefers the college ball because it's got stripes and easier to see, and he's dropping passes. <laughs> well, he showed why he was a, you know, a top 10 pick, yep. um, and he was an absolute stud going over 100 yards in his first career game, catching his first career touchdown. Um, Justin Herbert and Jalen Hurts were equally as impressive. Yeah. Both my guys, because I'm high on Herbert. Um, he's my passing yards leader for sophomore quarterback. That's a, a market prop that we have on win bet. Uh, threw for 337 yards and a touchdown. Not the prettiest win overall. Both teams combined for 14 penalties, three turnovers. So, like, that wasn't very pretty, but he looked great. And Jalen Hurts is my quarterback in fantasy, so I was definitely happy with him. Oh, I've got Jalen Hurts fantasy shares. Love yeah, that. Yeah, love that. Okay. Yeah, no, I, I think I think they both looked really strong, and it's it's very interesting to see these younger players perform this way when you have a player like Aaron Rodgers, who is the veteran of the game, have such a poor performance. Do you think that this is only going to go up from here? Like, are we going to see more of this good play, or do you think there's a chance for some negative progression? I think there's going to be moments where there are bumps in the road. It's the case with any young quarterback, but I think we've seen enough from these three, um, especially Justin Herbert, to say that these are guys who are who are franchise quarterbacks and are, are this is who they are. Mm -hmm. What impresses me about Justin Herbert is it's not just the numbers, and he put up those numbers last year, but right. it's the ability to come from behind in the fourth quarter and then ice a game, and that's what he did in this game. Against, in my opinion, one of the best defenses, especially defensive fronts, in all of football, mm -hmm. the Washington football team, Justin Herbert scores a go-ahead touchdown, two-yard or three-yard pass to Mike Williams, the start of the fourth quarter. Then they get the ball back at the end of the game, and 
Justin Herbert leads a six minute and 43 second drive to ice the game. That's what good quarterbacks do. That's what the elite ones do. When you have the chance to come back and win a game, you do it. When you get the ball back and have a chance to ice the game, you do it. You don't get the ball back to, uh, to the Washington football team and give them another chance. You have the ball. You end up in victory formation, best play in football. Um, and he did that. And then Jalen Hurts, we talk about, you know, kind of these elite quarterbacks, maybe starting on their decline. I don't think Matt Ryan and Aaron Rodgers are in the same category right now, given Aaron Rodgers just won the league MVP, but Matt Ryan's been steadily declining for the last couple of years. And and then the Falcons got embarrassed by Jalen Hurts and the Eagles. Jalen Hurts was tremendous. 62 yards rushing, 27 and 35 through the air for 264 yards and three touchdowns. Devonta Smith, that Alabama chemistry, um, Mm -hmm. those guys rekindling their, their connection. I mean, he was tremendous. Jalen Rieger scored a touchdown. Dallas Goddard uh, scored a touchdown. Miles Sanders looked really, looked really good. Um, so you look at all three of those quarterbacks as one of you know the three of the biggest storylines of this week with a, you know those guys in their second year potentially replacing the Matt Ryan's and others as 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 more of the you know the, this next generation of quarterback in, in football. Backtracking a little bit because I want to touch on Zach Wilson with the Jets and Panthers game because we didn't really get into that. Uh, Jets lost 19 to 14. Wilson went six of 16, 84 yards, interception, no touchdowns. I know you were pretty high on him. You were saying you were surprised that um, he kind of had long odds in terms of uh, offensive rookie of the year. So what's kind of your take on what you saw from him in the first performance? I was surprised that he was behind Justin Fields just because he was starting from the jump. You know, mm-hmm. to me, anytime you are named the week one starter, you're going to have a chance to win rookie of the year. I don't think he was Tremendous, but I mean, heck, 258 yards and two touchdowns um, kept them in that game late. I think you saw flashes of why they really like him. I think the Jets in general are just sort of a mess, um, you know, to where it's hard to join a team like the Jets, an organization like the Jets. It's sort of like Baker Mayfield coming to the Browns, which makes it so impressive what Baker's been able to do there in terms of making them a playoff caliber team and getting double digit wins last year. It's the same thing with the Jets. You've got to change a culture. You've got to teach a team how to win, even though you've never done so in the NFL. Robert Sala is a first-time head coach. He's having to do the same thing to build culture and um, and get buy-in from his players when he hasn't done that as a head coach before. That is a franchise that is down bad and has been down bad for a long time now. So, yes, it's you know one game. It wasn't great, but but you like what you see with the connection of Zach Wilson and Corey Davis. Five catches, 97 yards, and two touchdowns for him. Uh, I'm not losing hope on Zach Wilson. This, this to me, is different than we could talk about Trevor Lawrence and the Jags getting blown out by the Texans. That's far more embarrassing for Urban Meyer and, and Jacksonville than I think this, this game was for the Jets because mm-hmm. no one's expecting anything from the Jets. And maybe no one's expecting anything from the Jags either, but I, I foolishly was more bullish than I guess I should have been on the Jags. Uh, I, I think a lot of people were, though. But, yeah, yeah I thought yeah. Zach Wilson was fine. First career start. Yeah. I don't think I saw anything that was like, oh, whoa, that's alarming. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you mentioned Justin Fields. I want to touch on that because I like this kind of idea of a segment, Troll of the Week. Bears head coach Matt Nagy is the Troll of the Week. We were waiting to see how his love for Andy Dalton would fare in game one against the Rams. And uh, we, you know what? It's like it, the face that he's making right now. It's like the it's like the person on Twitter who like says something ridiculous like mm-hmm. just to piss people off. Yeah. yeah. That's Matt Nagy's got to be trolling us, right? He's been trolling Actually. us since the draft. The second they drafted Justin Fields, the night of the draft. Yeah, we're really excited about this guy, but like, hey, Andy Dalton's our guy. But I promised Andy. Andy, Dal- Andy Dalton's I our promised. guy. Yeah, I promised yeah. him. And we're all like, okay, wink, wink, Matt, we got you. <laughs> and then it doesn't change. Preseason comes and goes. And it's like, no, Andy Dalton's our guy. And it's like, Oh, this is for real. He's actually going to start Andy Dalton here. <laughs> Throws a red zone interception on the first drive. <laughs> and then what happened? You know, they did you like dabble Justin Fields in. He throws two passes, both complete for 10 yards, yep. also runs in and on his only carry for a three yard touchdown. Yeah. The only thing more bizarre than, than Matt Nagy, like pearl clutching his decision to start Andy Dalton and like this loyalty that is uh, incomprehensible. Beyond me, yeah is Chris Collinsworth during the game, and there were a number of tweets about it, like loving up on Andy Dalton about like how great Andy has been playing. He's playing a real solid game. And, oh, they got a decision to make at some point between Justin Fields, but, you know, Andy Dalton. And it was like, 
What is happening what, what here? Game are you Between guys? Matt Nagy and Chris Collinsworth, what's happening here? Because like the rest of the entire universe is, is on the table saying Justin Fields should be the guy. He gets in a couple of glimpses of like, oh yeah, maybe this guy is ready to play. Mm-hmm. What I love is when like things are like comprehensively unpopular yeah. and then they go predictably terribly. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, who could have seen this coming? Like no quite literally knew. everybody. Yeah. Well, the best part, too, is Nagy, I still get it. Nagy said preseason, he's like, we just want to see what he looks like in the regular season. Why? Like, this dude has been playing football. Yeah, <laughs> like, why? We know. He's been in the NFL since 2011. Like, I don't get it. We know what he's going to bring to the table. I don't really know what the question is here. If, if Aaron <laughs> Rodgers isn't sabotaging uh, the Packers, Matt Nagy is certainly... <laughs> yeah. So, some... I don't know what deal he made with somebody else. Yeah. What mm-hmm. points he's shaving... <laughs> I don't know. It's sick. It's it is. It's incomprehensible and inexplicable. It is. Yeah. Tr- troll troll of the week. Uh before we touch on baseball a little bit, I want to get to our winning picks because I'm sad, man. I didn't hit my first one and it's not cuz I'm biased. I was on the Pats minus two and a half against the Dolphins. Um they went in as three and a half point favorites. Like Mac did what he could. It wasn't Damian on Harris. Mac. Damien Harris blew it. He didn't even have a bad game, though. That's what sucks is, yes, the fumble on the eight-yard line is what ruined the game. But yeah, that, 100 oh, yards, 23 thing? carries. like that. But, of course, it, it comes down to those clutch game, you know, th- those clutch possessions. And, yeah, Damien Harris. That was brutal. I had a nice, par- had a nice four-leg parlay. That was what cost it for me. Yeah. Uh, so I didn't want to know. Broncos came through for me on the money line. If you yeah. got them in any spread, it didn't matter. They blew out the Giants, who yeah. um, talked about things that weren't a surprise. The Giants being terrible um, went exactly <laughs> according to plan. So I want to know. Uh, you're 0-1. We got, we got another pick to make here. I'll, let, I'll give you the ball first. Uh, where would you like to go? Yeah, uh, I mean, we're finishing off week one, Ravens Raiders, which is exciting tonight. I hope we get over to um, Allegiant Stadium because we got people walking by. Remember, if you're at the win, come say hello because we, we got this glass wall. We can interact with you. Uh, Ravens, four-point favorites, total at 50 and a half. I, I don't know, and I don't know if it's because of all the games we've seen so far that I just don't want to take a side here because I'm like, I don't know what the hell is going on. But also... Another factor is the fact that Allegiant Stadium is going to be bumping, and everyone I know who's been in there has said the atmosphere is just unreal. Um, I don't really want to touch this idea of Ravens dealing with the key injuries, so I'm not sure how their offense is going to heat up. Raiders upgraded their defensive line. I'm going to kind of lean to trends here, which I don't love to do, but the under is 5-2 and two in the past seven week one games for the Ravens. I'm not 100% sure about the offenses, but I think both defenses – can kind of hold their own. So I'm going to go under 50 and a half here. I think it's um, a little high for this game. I like it. Um, I'm going to take a player prop here because I don't like the sides either. I don't really know how this game is going to go. Yeah. I was surprised it's 50 and a half. That's a lot of points. Um, but I'm not touching that either. Um, with the Ravens injuries, I don't, I don't know where this game is going to go. Um, but I do love Mark Andrews as an anytime touchdown score. You get even money. It's a mm-hmm. plus 100. So um, no juice on this one, but he's by far Lamar Jackson's most reliable pass catcher. The, the Raiders are thin at running back. They just signed 32-year-old K.J. Wright, who had a tremendous year last year and is still a fantastic player against the run, it is good at stopping plays in the flats. He was a menace against screen passes last year, but I do think he's susceptible downfield in coverage, and I think Mark Andrews is going to attack him uh, early and often. Mm-hmm. Again, you look at this game with the 50 and a half, I mean, Vegas expects this game to be high scoring. So points are, you would you know, imagine, okay, even if it doesn't get to 50, there's going to be touchdowns scored. I like Mark Andrews as an anytime touchdown score. Mm-hmm. I thought about going with uh, the over to Jalen or uh, Henry Ruggs or Brian Edwards. Both those guys receiving props are under 40 yards. I think Henry Ruggs like 35 and a half. You can get that on one catch. But I'm going with Mark Andrews, anytime touchdown score at plus 100, hoping to go 2-0. and And before we close out the show, and I knew you were going to mention we talked baseball a little bit, the AL wild card race. There are five teams between three games. But my Mariners are hosting your Red Sox this Monday through Wednesday. Series yeah. starts Monday night. And I want to add a little extra wager to it. Okay. Um, if the Mariners win this series, I'm going to bring you my Ken Griffey Jr. jersey. <laughs> and you're going to rock that for Thursday's show. Okay. And, on, and you can bring me whatever Red Sox apparel you okay. have. And I will rock it on Thursday if the Red Sox win the series. I have a sparkly uh, Red Sox baseball cap. <laughs> 
I hate so that. We're yep, we're going to go with that. Uh, yeah, that three-game series starts tonight, so that'll be exciting. Must-win games we'll, for both teams. We'll let you guys know how that all works out. Uh, that's episode two. We will see you back on Thursday, or you can listen to us again on Thursday. 